Brand new in Excel on the view tab, you have the navigation pane. And this is just a fantastic way of being able to search for and see different things. You even have, for example, um, charts, pivot tables, pivot charts, shapes, that's a pivot table. Or if you're using like actual tables that are formatted as tables using this feature, then it is showing you separately as well. So really, really cool thing and it's completely searchable. So uh, I'm going to show you this and lots, lots of new tricks as well that can be used with the new Excel, the old Excel around navigation. My name is David Benham and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel, so subscribe if you like these kind of videos. So um, what else can you do with this? Well, here's a hidden trick that I showed you. <laughs> so my next trick is if you go to the navigation tab, then if you immediately press Control F for find, it does give you the ability to search in it. So if you want to go straight to the sheet called, for example, uh, cell, then it will show you that. And then you can go to it and navigate it. Notice that unless you do it immediately, you get the normal Control F, which is for find and replace. But if you do it immediately, then you get it to search in this. And only find and replace has never been able to search for sheet names but the navigation pane kind of changes all of that. You have a built-in table of contents. Really, really, really cool. To check if you have the feature, go to File and then Account. And then look over here, version 2211 or 2212 or 230 something will have it. Otherwise, you will not have this feature. The other features that we're going to show should be available to everyone that has Excel desktop. All right. So uh, next, I'm going to go through a whistle stop tour of some of my favorites. If you hold down control and click on these, you go to the last page or the first page. If you right click, you see a list of all the sheets. Again, unfortunately not searchable. That would have been really, really useful, but you can double click to go to any of those as need be. Navigating to the file location, if you go to file and then info, you can go to open file location and it will open up the folder that might have that. But if you have your documents saved on the cloud, you can go to file and info you get open file location up here and this will open up the one that i just showed you but you also have open file location down here and this will actually open up on a web browser your the folder with your file location so you can navigate to it through excel online that's usually how i get to a file if i need to open it in excel online another shortcut that i absolutely love and i think everyone needs to use this is control page down that will take you to the next page with data control page up will take you to the previous page with data if you are using a laptop, however, you might need to get to that through Control plus FN plus down arrow or up arrow. In Mac, you need to use that second one as well. Some cell navigation tricks. So let's say you have this cell selected and you want to go to this one, jump to that one. Control down arrow will take you to the last cell with data in that direction. Control right arrow will take you there. However, if there is no data in the cell, Control down arrow will take you to the next cell with data. So if you're here and you go control down arrow, it'll take you to the next because it'll jump there. Control down arrow will take you there. So uh, that can be really good if you're doing formulas as well. So for example, here, let's say that I want to do equals this one plus this one. Then control, go to the adjacent column, control down arrow, right, control up, shift, up arrow, and then control D will drag that down. And this can work with thousands of rows of data just with your keyboard. And once you get used to it, it does get really, really good for speeding up. So uh, some other tricks, let's say that you are in a cell and you just want to quickly filter it for this. You can right click and you can choose filter and you can filter by selected cells value like that. And it will just add a filter and select it to filter it like that, which is pretty good. So I'm um, just remove the filter there. Now let's say you're in a worksheet and you want to quickly select cells that have certain criteria. So in the home tab, you have find and select and go to special. Love this. You can select all of the cells which have, for example, formulas. And you can choose what type of formulas as well. Press OK. And then all of the cells with formulas, even the non-adjacent ones, are selected. Note that these two are broken probably. So this is a great way of me being able to learn that because these ones don't have formulas in them. Uh, also, let's say that you are in some data like this and you wanna quickly select the blanks. You can go to 
find and select and go to special and you can choose blanks like that. Really, really good speed up trick for various different tasks. And in general, just like explore these, I actually use this a lot for selecting data validation, all in the same conditional formats. Selecting cells that have different or differences to the rest of it. So for example, here, if I have some data, I can just select within a subset like this. And I can say that I want to go to special and I can choose all the column differences. And these will be any cell that has a different formula to the topmost cell. So here I can see that I'm dividing by the, the rate, but this one I've fixed the number 4,000, which means it's likely to go wrong. And in this other one, then I have just hard coded in the number 1000, which is also then gonna go wrong eventually. So that can be a really, really good trick, go to special. You also have the name box. So this, you can click on the drop down arrow and this will have a list of all of your tables if you're using them or named ranges. So for example here, if I go to keyboard shortcuts, this is a table in the sheet called ref keyboard shortcuts. The way that you make a table, as I mentioned before, is format as table. Lots and lots of different advantages to using them. If I go through in another one of my videos and then in table design, you can give it the name and then that appears here. Also works with named ranges if you use your name manager. I love using grouping. So grouping is the ability to expand a collapse like that, where you can also navigate the user. For example, here I've got the first layer just says grouping. The second layer says what the individual commands are and the third layer has it showing so I can demo it here as well, second layer will reveal all of those as we'll see later on in this video. So uh, how do you do it? Pretty simple. It's kind of like hide, but just better, I think. If you select your columns and rows, go to the data tab and choose group. And then you have the ability to do that. You wanna get rid of it and group, as you might have expected. So back to these ones. Then we've got go to command. So if you right click, you have the ability to search for any command. So if I wanna go to, for example, freeze panes, I can use my keyboard and freeze it there. And then if I drag, I can always see that. So that is a pretty good way of doing that. Um, I actually put it on my quick access tool, but I have another video where I show you that because that's really, really useful as well. Go to comments. So if you have comments up here on the right, then you have here and you can see more comments to see other ones in other spreadsheets as well. Much better than the old feature that used to be with notes, uh, which you could actually get to through GoToSpecial if you really wanted to, you could go to special and you can choose notes here, but I personally don't really like it that much. Um, find and replace. So you probably know find and replace, you can get to it with control H or control F. But what a lot of people don't know is within, you can change to workbook. And then if I look for, for example, formula, I can press find all or find next. And it will find them in every single worksheet, whatever that is in. Press X. Next we have outliers. So select some data and here you can see the outliers, the really, really high ones are showing in a color. You don't have that in go to special, but in conditional formatting, uh, you can go to highlight cell rules and more rules, or you can go to new rule and then choose this one above or below average. It's pretty hidden, but if you choose these one, one standard deviation above or below, two standard deviations above and below, these are usually the ones that are kind of known to be outliers. Let's choose this one and change the format to say this one and press OK and OK again. And then they will turn that color. And if something is a very, very high number as well, it will turn that color. If you then want to filter to it, you can just add filters, give this some names, and then you can filter by color and show your outliers like that. You also have a similar thing for duplicates, but it's actually a lot easier to do duplicates. If you select the data, Go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, duplicate values. Uh, sure, let's show that in yellow. And then they are showing you this way. But the moment something becomes not a duplicate like that, then the other one that's associated with it is unhighlighted. This is now a night layer, so it is highlighted that color. Uh, great. So next up, we're going to expand these ones one by one. So straight press, trace precedence. Let's say that you have some data here. And this comes from these cells and also some cells on another worksheet. So what you can do is you can select a cell, you can go to the formulas tab and you can choose trace precedence. And this will show you all of the things that are linked. And if you double click on this line, this shows you it's in another worksheet or workbook. Double click and it shows you what it's linked to and then 
press OK or double click to go to either of those. Trace dependence works the other way around when you want to see what is linked to what. So if I click on this one and I trace dependent, it shows me it goes that way. Remove arrows, we'll get rid of it. I, I don't tend to use dependence as much, but I do like precedence. Hyperlinks. So you can have any text that you can click to it and it will take you there. And then I can go back to it that way. You can also have it on a shape. And if I go back here, what I can do is I can get any data, uh, a shape or text. So let's say I want to insert a shape. I like this one that kind of looks like a bit of a button type arrangement. So let's change the color and let's say here you are. Then you can just kind of make it black, but you can right click and you can choose link. It's called hyperlink now rather than other one. You can choose an email or also a website, but I'm going to choose this one and change the cell. So H17, press OK. And then if you click on it, it will take you to where you want to go. So you can do the same thing in a function with equals hyperlink. Press tab to lock that in. Link location. Now I'm just going to use the code rather than go through it step by step. You do have to learn it. Speech marks, uh, number sign, and then apostrophe speech marks, ampersand, and then the cell. And then you're going to do ampersand speech marks, and then apostrophe exclamation point, and then click on the cell reference, which let's say H21, and then close your speech marks, and then comma, then go to the friendly name, which is optional, but usually you would click on the same thing. Close your brackets, press enter, and then it does get underlined. And if you click on it, it will take you to that cell reference wherever you clicked on. Selection pane. So selection pane allows you to uh, select every object. So if you go to, you click on an object, you can get to it. Or also in page layout, you have the selection pane here. And then it has grouped objects, single objects, charts, slices, images, shapes, things like that. And you can edit it that way. You can hide them, show them by clicking on there. And you can reprioritize them if one is on top of another one. You can also, though, in Find and Select, you can select objects. And this allows you to, like in PowerPoint, select multiple objects in one go and then move them together. But then you can't click on a cell again until you go to Untick Select Objects. And then you're back to normal. Invalid data, so stuff that doesn't go by data validation rules. Love data validation, the most underused thing. Get a drop down list, and you can see that these two are still misspelled. One of them is. So if you go to the data tab, you can choose a drop down next to data validation and circle invalid data. Draws a big red circle around whatever's not valid. This should be a positive number. Take off the negative, and the circle goes away. Or if I just say just 8th of September 2022, this will be fine. And if I change this one to the one that it should be, it doesn't always get rid of it for text, but if you double click and enter, then it will get rid of it. Uh, love data validation, definitely underused. If you're not using it for your data input tables, you will have way more errors than you should have. Next up, still in the data tab, we have queries and connections. And this is a list of your queries and other things. If you double click it, it'll take you to Power Query in that place. Or where you have it loaded, you can click on it to take you to that loaded place. Next, you have tables. So if I want to refer to something without clicking on it, I can write equals and then square bracket. And then it has the names of the column. This will be all the column or at symbol will be just this row. So I can write equals at and then I can go to, for example, price, press tab to lock that in, close my square bracket, and that will be the number like this equals average of, say, these numbers. These also have a special way to refer to them, the name of the table and then that, especially if you're outside the table. Or if you include the headers, then that's what the headers look like. So you've got three ways of doing it and one is all that has headers included as well. So if you like this video, then my name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, PowerPoint, Power BI. So click the like button if this is something that you enjoyed. <laughs> Thanks for watching.